Feeling Retro. Hey there Retro lovers, today we'll be admiring the clean and streamlined design of Bang & Olufsen's Beo System 5500. It's extremely powerful in design, wonderfully easy to use and it's an understated minimalistic design that is almost completely devoid of buttons and dials on the front and I just love it. Built in 1986, we're talking about a system that's over 30 years old now and you'd never guess it by looking at this design. But don't be fooled by its simple design on the outside as that gives no indication of the massive potential beneath. Looks are definitely deceptive with this. Today we don't have the record player in our stack. That would have been brilliant, but we are making do with the fantastic tape deck, the Super Bayo Master. And because our CD player has been having some issues today, we've decided to leave that out of our stack. We also have the master control panel, which gives us access to almost every function and that handy clear display keeps us informed all along the way. Today we've paired the stack with the enormous and stylish model 6611 Beovox Penta passive loudspeakers. These stainless steel and grey speakers were also built in 1986 along with the stack of separates that we've got here today and they stand tall at just under one and a half metres. A pair of these would have cost around £900 brand new. These are passive speakers, so they draw their power from the amplifier that we have with us here today. The bass on these is excellent, and so it should be, as there are four mid to bass speakers on each channel, capable of shifting a lot of air. This is complemented by tweeters for the high frequency notes, with a well-conceived crossover, and so that are seriously heavy duty components. The pentagonal cabinet was designed to reduce the internal standing waves and reflection, it was a simple and beautifully effective way of eliminating distortion, so you get a fantastically crisp, clear and loud sound. The speakers have nine individual loudspeaker units that were accurately positioned below the front grille, beneath the dust covering, in a vertical line to produce a sound dispersion which was so precise, by and Olufsen say, that reflections from the floor and ceiling were completely eliminated. B&O also say that the choice of using the polished stainless steel was made to help the speaker blend into the surroundings by reflecting them back out. This gave the speaker the same colour as the surrounding and helped to make the speaker more of a subtle fixture. It does also mean that whilst we're recording them today, you might get a little reflection of either myself or my dining room. As I mentioned a little earlier, our Beogram CD50 is faulty. We included it here today at the start to show you what the more completed stack looked like. So, after a little information about this unit, we'll take it away. The CD50 was one of B&O's first CD players. The CD50 was actually the first B&O CD player designed to be of a stacking system. It was styled to match the rest of the system perfectly, and it was only the small cut on the front panel that divided the drawer cover from the rest of the fascia that gave away which of the system components was the CD player. Let's take a quick look at the master control panel before we start operating some of the functions. Each time you give that system an order, the light display tells you exactly what's going on. You can do many functions just from using the control panel there. For example, you can be woken up at a certain time in the morning with your favourite music or news. And the same can be applied if you wanted to tape a programme when you were out. And it was all designed to be part of Bang & Olufsen's round the house system. So it could be operated from what Bang & Olufsen claimed to be 25 metres away. Now I haven't put that to the test, but I have wandered around the house a little bit and as long as you seem to be facing in the correct direction, that seems to work no problem. This model of control panel is quite dis easily distinguished from older models because this rotary dial here was a new feature that they put on. As I'll show you a little bit later on, this can be used in many ways and it makes operating the system much easier. So let's take a closer look at the Bayo Master 5500, which is the tuner and amplifier. This was built in 1986, and this unit alone would have cost £600 if you were to buy it brand new. The Bayo Master, along with any Bayo Masters in a stacking system like this one, is the heart and the brains. Connected by data link, it allows you to remote control the tape deck via the control panel that we've got with us today. The 2 times 60 watt 8 OHM tuner and amplifier gives true hi-fi quality. And the automatic power handling control system, which we'll discuss a little bit more later on, prevents overloading and distortion, regardless of how many speakers we connect up. At the back of the system, we have a liftable hinged grille, under which we have many sockets and six and seven pin DIN connections needed to hook up a whole range of devices. On the front panel here, we only really have two buttons. We have step program, 
and we have mute. Now these both have different functions depending on whether you tap once, tap repeatedly, or hold. So with the step program button, a rapid tap switches on the Bayomaster on the preset station that you were last listening to. By tapping repeatedly, you can step through the preset stations and you'll see that number on the dial here changing as I click through. If we move over to the mute button here, one tap switches on the unit where you were last listening to at the previously adjusted levels. Another rapid tap mutes the loudspeakers in the speaker's one socket and another rap tap cuts the speakers in again. A prolonged hold of the button switches the Bayo system into standby mode. Moving from left to right on the display, we see if the speaker one socket has a cutout or a timer. We also get an indicator that tells us if the loudness mode is on or off. And the same again with the automatic fine tuning. Over to the right hand side, the large number there will show us how many pre what preset number we're currently listening to. Next to that it tells us if there are any bass adjustments or treble adjustments in progress. And finally right at the end of the display it shows us what source we're listening to, which right now is radio. The only the other thing of note on the front panel here is the small headphone socket at the bottom. In our stack today we can also take a look at the Beocord 5500, the cassette deck. It's a very similar size to the other components that we've seen today and it weighs around eight kilograms. In 1986, buying this item individually would have cost around 480 to 500 pounds. At the time, it was as close as you could get to a professional piece of kit without buying a professional piece. There was also a reverse, letting you play or record both sides of a cassette as one continuous tape, and automatic adjustment of sound levels avoided annoying volume changes from one recording to the next. There was also Bang & Olufsen's famous HX Pro recording system, which gave vastly superior sound quality on the higher frequencies, creating a richer and more detailed sound image. Thanks for joining us today to take a look at an extremely early example of a Bang & Olufsen stereo stack. I've really enjoyed taking this journey down memory lane with a high quality, well-built system. Remember to check out our other videos here on Feeling Retro, where we admire, enjoy and review all things retro. Remember to like the video and subscribe. And if you weren't already, I hope this Bang & Olufsen classic has helped you to feel retro.